Hello, Elizabeth Jenkins. It's nice to be back with you again. My name is Ellen Kittredge and I'm a student of Elizabeth Jenkins and I um, have been very grateful to receive many teachings from her over the past several years that have really profoundly shifted my ability to um, connect with nature and to walk in harmony with the, with the planet on a planetary consciousness level. And so Elizabeth carries some extraordinary lineage teachings and traditions from the high Andes of Peru, from the Inca lineage tradition. And one thing that I have found about your work, Elizabeth, and how you've brought it forward in the last 30 plus years of teaching and, and offering this work is that you've really made sure that the feminine is um, discussed and brought in in a really big way into a lineage tradition that has, you know, historically seen more men, I think, um, coming out as teachers and offering the, 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 the transmissions, which of course is wonderful and great, but it's also really wonderful to find that balance and make sure that the feminine is fully expressed. And one of the concepts that you've taught me about that I think is really fascinating and really um, exciting in a very deep visceral sort of awakening way is this concept of Miskiani, this mm. sacred city of the feminine. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much, Ellen. It's just a delight to have these little chats. I really enjoy this. <laughs> this format is so nice. It's so much easier than, it's so much more alive than writing things on a page. Yeah. So, um, and thank you all for listening, whoever is listening to this and watching us and being with us here. Um, <clears throat> I first heard about Miskayani. Miskayani is interesting. Um, Miskayani is a, is a mystical city of highly evolved sacred female priestesses that are very powerful and very sexy <laughs> and very spiritually evolved. And when I first heard about them, I was in Manaus, Brazil with Juan and Don Manuel Kespi. Don Manuel Kespi was one of the last really, really powerful Pacos from Queros. Um, and I'll just preface this to say that mo pretty much all of my knowledge of the Andean tradition comes directly from Juan Nunez del Prado and the Quero people and working for years and years now with the, the living descendants of the Incas, the Quero people, the Quero, to say it properly, are lit come from a tiny little village high up in the Andes where the high Andes meets the Amazon jungle. It's the confluence of two great powers of mother nature, which is said to be very, very powerful. If you live at the confluence of two nature forces and they do and they've always been up there and uh, before since pre-inca times and through till today they live in their same little villages that are at a you know up to 14 15,000 feet um <clears throat> the Quero, there's about 3,000 of them and it's a tiny population and they are known as having this direct link back to their original tradition, which they've maintained for all this, they've the, an amazing resistance of 500 years. Um, and I'm talking about them because they were first discovered, we discovered, seen in 1949 by Juan's father, Oscar, Oscar Nunez del Prado, and he led the first you know, official academic expedition to go to their villages in 1955. And this is when the myths about Miskayani were first discovered. Yeah. The tales, there's recording somewhere in Juan's basement of these interviews with the Quero. And God, wouldn't it be something to get our hands on those? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, oh my goodness. Um, <clears throat> And this, this tale about Miskayani 
kind of first emerged that I'm aware of from that time, from that 1955 expedition. And um, when I first heard about it, it was in Manaus, Brazil, when uh, Don Manuel Kespi and Juan had gone through a literal veritable kind of hell to get Don Manuel his passport to be able to come to be the keynote speaker at the transpersonal, the International Association of Transpersonal Psychology in Brazil, I think it was 1995 or 96. He was invited by Stan Groff after I made a really good case to Stan <laughs> for having him come. And the title of the <clears throat> conference was the Technologies of the Sacred. So Don Manuel came to lead the group in a beautiful offering a Hewarikui ceremony, what people call the despacho ceremony. Um, and we, I, I had literally, we had to file three lawsuits to get Don Manuel his passport. And when they finally arrived, I never knew until the last minute, where would they make it? And when Juan and Don Manuel arrived, I was just ecstatic. I saw them in the Hotel Tropical of Manaus. And, and I said, Don Manuel, would you not love to meet the, the greet the river? And we went out back to the, um, the Rio Negro, which flows right by the Manaus Hotel. And Don Manuel went out and immediately started making an offering, got out his little coca leaf pouch and started saying an offering. And then he, and then uh, like a speedboat went by. And so right in the middle of his prayer, he's like, wow. <laughs> you know, he'd never seen one of those before. And, and then he kept going. And then um, as Juan and I stood there, we watched Juan uh, need me and said, look at Don Manuel's bubble. And it was growing and growing until it sort of encapsulated or he was encapsulated by the entire bubble of the river, the energy field of the river. And he turned around and he had this huge smile on his face and he came out of the river and he hugged us. And it was like a frontal carpi because <laughs> he hugged us with this, all this power of the river. And with this giddy smile on his face, he started speaking Quechua to Juan really fast and really excited. And, and that's when Juan said to me, he translated the words of Don Manuel and he said, there are so many Nustas here, beautiful, sexy nature beings. We must be very, very close to the borders of Niskayani, right? And that was the first time I heard that word. And so I asked, I began my investigation then. I wrote about it in my second book, I think, Journey to Keros. And, and when I wrote about it, I expected all the women would run up to me and say, oh, tell us about Miss Kayani. And no one ever did. <laughs> it was really, really super interesting to me. It seemed like the time didn't really come until this 2014 May when Mama Simona opened her mesa. And this whole experience started to happen. <clears throat> Juan has always said to me, the entire Andean tradition is feminine. Mm. It's the power is Pachamama. Don Umberto and Doña Bernardina, a sacred healing couple from Keros. Don Umberto will always say, oh my God, Don, Doña Bernardina is so much more powerful than me because she's directly connected to Pachamama, to Mother Earth. And of course, that's the biggest power in front of us. That's the biggest power there is closest to us. Um, no matter that the sun is 98.89% of all the mass of our solar system, the sun is much further away. <laughs> and Pachamama is right here. And so she's the most immediate, accessible you know, perceivable force. Um, so <clears throat> this has been my quest is to find out more about the female um, knowledge. Juan has always said the feminine knowledge is much different and separate from the, the knowledge of the men and very few women Pacos come forward to teach. So since that opening of Mama Simona, 
um, mountain and her her altar, we it's been a really concerted effort to bring forth these Musta Pacos and offer them a platform to share and just experiencing the carpies from these women is like, oh my God, this is where the power is. I, I so, remember I remember Elizabeth um, <clears throat> during the Hachin Karpai when I went on that journey with you in 2017 and just this, the different hiwarikwis that we made with the new tapacos and then their incredible song um, that mm. they offered that was straight from the, you know, straight from the land. It was just, that was incredible. That was so potent. Um, I'm wondering if you could just share a little bit about um, how it is that you've woven this work with the feminine into your into your trips because you're leading this the Hachun Karpai, the great initiation in August of this year, yes. um, 2020, and you've added an extra day on to work, you know, specifically mm -hmm. with the new Tapako. So can you just tell us just a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, um, so I think since 2014, the the power of the women has been coming through so strongly and wanting to be delivered to people, to all the initiates. So, um, so yeah, we start with the Mama Simona Mountain. That's the first day of our pilgrimage to really honor the sacred feminine, mm -hmm. to honor Mama Simona mm -hmm. as the one who connects and integrates all the living energy of the 12 Apus of the sacred uh, system of Cusco. Um, and to be able to make an offering to Miss Gayani and invoke the Nustas and the Koyas, which are the sacred beings. If you think, some of, some of you may be familiar with the, the Tibetan concept of Shambhala, where this is the home of the Rigdon kings. This is the home of the great, you know, the kind of origin, I think. It's, it's understood as the origin of the Tibetan tradition. That's where the wisdom comes from. It's the same way in the Andean tradition. Miskayani is like the metaphysical city of the, the house of the knowledge and the spiritual power of the feminine and the feminine knowledge and power that's in the Andean tradition. It kind of originates in Miskayani, which is a metaphysical city that off at times coincides with the physical earth. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> in talking about Miss Gayani, the, the Carol Pacos are hilarious because they're always like nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Ha, 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 ha. We're really lucky we'll be reborn in Miss Gayani where all the beautiful sexy women are. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I never really understood that until I, I, I was told that the great, the most powerful Pacos of the last century, Don Andreas Espinosa, Don Manuel Kespi, Don Mariano Apasa, are and the ones before them of the of the 1900s of the last century, were it was said that their mothers came from the Skyani. Really? Yes. Wow. So that is the potency of everything in, from my experience, everything Inca is like a myth that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, so if you think of a myth as a, as a story or an archetype, but it's actually true in the Andes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, that is so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. That's incredible. And um, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just so powerful to be receiving these direct transmissions from these living wisdom holders who are, there's so few yeah. of them. And, yeah. you know, there's so few of them who've, who've kept the lineage impeccable and intact. And exactly. And, and, them. and let me add that um, not, not only do we work with the, the Nustapacos, but also the Koyas, because the Incas didn't rule as like a guy, like the king, the Inca. It was a sacred, holy couple, uh, the Inca and the Koya. So each one of the Koyas we honor as well and call on her power mm. and the reason for going to uh, Mama Simona first is, is really to call on the power of Mama Simona who was a priestess of her village 
Mm-hmm. And she was like a chaperuna. She was half Inca and half Spanish. She's a modern Paco of, you know, the end of the Inca empire mm-hmm. and leading us on to today. So honoring all of the Koyas and their lineage and their sacred power. Wow. As well as what wow. we do. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you for this incredible journey into the the, the frequencies of this um, of this of this potential. That you know, the way I see it, it already lives within us. But we just have to remember that and then wake it up. And these initiations help to um, help us to come to that place of remembrance. You know, Absolutely. literally a remembering, like literally bringing ourselves back to ourselves and you know, accessing our full potential and living into it. And in my experience, you know, my work with you and with these traditions, I absolutely feel this work is, is totally life-changing and will bring us back to our true nature, our true selves. So thank you yeah. so much for, for everything you've done over the last 30 plus years and just for offering this upcoming trip and for all the other workshops and offerings that you that you have in your amazing books, which are wonderful transmissions in and of themselves as well. So, thank you. Okay, let's talk again soon. Thank you so much. Bye bye for now. <laughs>